So yesterday, if you guys didn't watch the video, we talked about Austin Matthews in particular and how these rumors now about him going back home to Arizona or going to a hot place in the U.S. like L.A. or San Jose are really going to start to heat up now, especially Arizona. And honestly, that's just the reality. With the contract situation coming up for him, with the type of play that the Leafs have been going through the last few years and the scrutiny that he gets under, especially during playoff time, it's a reality. Not that he's going to leave, but that it's a very real possibility. But something else really interesting happened after that game where they got eliminated by the Florida Panthers. William Nylander is the one who stepped up in a 2-1 game and tied the thing for the Toronto Maple Leafs with under five minutes left. And when that happened, you would saw quite a few people online, on Twitter mostly, saying, man, if this is William Nylander's last big moment as a Maple Leaf, that's really sad. And if you look at it, there is a very real possibility that if Kyle Dubas or whoever the GM is in a couple of months decides, hey, we have to make some kind of shakeup to this core four in order to have playoff success, I think that William Nylander is going to be the first casualty. I really do. And you could come at me all you want with Mitch Marner, Mitch Marner, Mitch Marner. But the problem with that is that he's making a double-digit salary and most teams have to move heaven and earth to make room for a contract like that, whereas William Nylander is getting paid a shade under $7 million, and his no-trade clause doesn't kick in until July 1st, which, by the way, is the last year on this deal. Very digestible for so many teams in the NHL. Somewhat easy contract to take on. It's not like he's 30, 31, 32. He's still in his 20s, man. He's 27, right in his prime. And you can come at me all you want with the, oh, he's soft, he doesn't go in the corners, you can't win with a guy like this, he checks out, do it all you want. This is an easy peasy contract to move. Seriously, with a guy of this skill level who has this kind of offensive upside and talent and has proven that he can produce at the NHL level you're going to have no problem moving this contract and getting good value for it, despite what some people say about him in the playoffs and the consistency thing with William Nylander. But the one thing that went through my head when I saw him score that 2-2 goal against Florida and he was fired up on the bench, I want this guy to be a Calgary Flames so bad. And again, I posted about it a few times, and I'm not the only one. I saw no less than five Flames fans on Twitter who are really, really diehards of the team, love these guys, posting their mock lineups for next season, and they had William Nylander, top right winger, with Jonathan Huberdeau and Elias Lindholm. And there's even a guy named Drew on Twitter, give him a follow, he's a great Flames follow, who photoshopped William Nylander in Flames gear, and it's just awesome to see a lot of Flames fan hop on this bandwagon. Of course, there's a ton of fans who are saying, no, 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 I don't want another passenger who's just going to kind of cruise and complain when the Flames lose. And I get it. I really do. I mean, especially with the dynamic in the locker room that we just witnessed with the Flames with guys like Huberto and Kadri versus Daryl Sutter. And there was rumors about complaining and stuff like that. I understand uh, another guy who isn't always at his best at all times for the Toronto Maple Leafs here. I understand the hesitancy, but at the same time, man, did the Flames lack another punchy offensive star player with a ton of talent and skill and speed this year. I mean, this Nylander kid could be your bump back guy. He could be a trigger man on your PP1. I mean, you give him a chance here and he could really help drive the offense, but he won't be the face of the franchise. And look, I don't think William Nylander is a face of the franchise type player. I think he's an amazing complimentary two or three, which is what he is in Toronto. But I really do think that given a new fresh opportunity as a two or a three behind a guy like Huberdo or Lindholm, I think this guy is going to absolutely thrive. I really do. And I posted about it on Twitter. His dad, Michael Nylander, played for the Calgary Flames in his heyday. William was born here in Calgary. I know he identifies as Swedish, but he was born here. And I mean, if his dad's not in his ear saying, hey, Calgary would be a great place for you to play. Man, I'd be surprised, to be honest with you. And if he doesn't like it, then, Willie, you're a free agent next year, then you can go sign with your Florida Panthers or your Tampa Bay Lightning or whatever you want, Vegas Golden Knights, if that's what you want to do. But I really think this could be a home run swing for Leaf fans, too. 
I love the Leafs, and I think that this could work for them too, because there's players on the Flames roster who could really benefit the Maple Leafs. And I'm talking to you, Noah Hannafin, and I know I just mentioned Lindholm, but if he decides when he's a free agent, he doesn't want to come back with the Flames, he could be somebody sent in a deal to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Lindholm with the Leafs, I think, would be sick. I think that would be such an awesome move. He would fit in perfectly on that roster. I think both sides can end up happy on this one. But yeah, of course, I want to know your guys' opinion as usual. Leaf fans, Flame fans especially, what do you think about this? And give me your trade pro- proposals. Who would you trade? Nylander for who? I think this could really be a winner for both sides. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.